Hey everybody, it's Tatiana with Back to Facts. I'm enjoying a nice day in Santa Monica. And uh, I just had to talk to you today about the border. The bottom line is anything that shows the thermal blankets is a short-term temporary intake facility at the border, at the border itself. While anyone who came to the border requesting asylum is getting processed, their identity verified, and then the children, many of whom came unaccompanied without any parents, the children, they are then put into long-term facilities where they have classes, crafts, drawing, art, soccer, and everything like that with the um, Health and Human Services Department. One of the reasons they actually had a hard time reunifying some of the children was that it's a different agency. And it's, it is shocking and very embarrassing, but it's not anything new that the government agencies don't talk to each other. So I just wanted to put that out there. Maybe I'll do a Facebook Live. I'm here with my child, my five-year-old son, and I'm thinking about the border right now. And I'm thinking about the brave men and women of the Border Patrol who are dealing with an unprecedented crisis of tens of thousands of unaccompanied children as well as family units coming. This happened once before in 2014. There is no way that I cannot have compassion for every single child who makes this treacherous journey. The majority of them actually have been making this journey by themselves. When they first come in and seek asylum, the Border Patrol takes them in in what's called intake. Only it's 72 hours or less on a normal day with normal flow. However, I'm sure that some of them probably stay in the intake facilities a little bit longer. The pictures that you've seen, they were used years ago for MERP, which is Mexican Interior Repatriation Program. They had the Mexican consulate there. It was the Nogales Processing Center. And that's where you see those thermal blankets. It was super, super, super hot out in the desert. They set up these intake facilities as overflow. They set them up as overflow in the areas where they actually inspect the food coming in from Mexico. Now I learned this directly from a border patrol agent who I know. But what I wanna to explain to you is there's a difference between the intake facilities and the Office of Refugee Resettlement, uh, Health and Human Services Department, which then brings them to places like Casa Padre in Brownsville, other places that we've seen, whatever's available, including, I believe, those World War II facilities where the infrastructure's already there. When the Mariolitos came in in 1980 from Cuba, they had to put them in some kind of an army base in Arkansas, believe it or not. When these things happen, you have to have overflow facilities, but I really want to make the distinction between the intake facilities where they verify the identity of these unaccompanied minors or family units. If they determine that perhaps the, the, the people who say they're their parents are not family, they will separate them, and this has been happening all along. If the parent has committed a crime other than crossing illegally, then they're going to separate them. What I was really disgusted by was that since the children who were separated earlier this year with the zero tolerance, since they were given to, or they were passed on to a different agency, the Health and Human Services Agency and their Office of Refugee Resettlement, it was really hard for them to uh, to reunite them, which is absolutely unacceptable. The agencies are different and. It's not a new thing. The American government has notoriously had a hard time with different agencies, whether, whether federal, state, and different jurisdictions, talking to each other. They have reunited a large part of them because I've been reading the, the lawsuit that the ACLU brought. A large, large portion of them, um, and some remain, but there's also a several hundred that shouldn't have been accompanied by the, the adults were claiming that they were their, their family when they were not because they know that they can't be turned back. So if you just started watching, then you understand there's intake facilities. The one in Nogales, the Nogales Processing Center was actually used for examination of food products. They opened it up for Mexican Interior Repatriation Program back in like 2011, 2012, but then in 2014 under Obama, they had to open it up again as overflow. And the Associated Press was allowed to go in and photograph. One photographer, one pool photographer was allowed to go and photograph when Jay Johnson, Department of Homeland Security Secretary under President Obama, when Jay Johnson went there to uh, inspect, he actually went there with Jan Brewer, then governor of um, 
Arizona. The AP photographer took a picture of him walking and all of the newspaper articles were very neutral. You know, like, oh, uh, here are the miners, here's Jay Johnson inspecting, and they quoted him as saying, well, you know, these conditions are, they're not ideal, but they're comfortable, and nobody made an uproar. Well, it was the exact same thing. So this isn't what aboutism, it's just saying, okay, let's look at the media coverage first. It was extremely neutral. Oh, Jay Johnson's here. He's, you know, he's Obama's appointee. So of course, you know, this is all they can do. It's very stressful and they have to, uh, they have to do something. They have to do overflow. Fast forward to President Trump's here. They opened up the Nogales Processing Center once again. And the pictures that everybody saw last year when they had zero tolerance were from that time when the AP photographer was allowed to go in and take pictures. And the uh, news reports were all neutral. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you that once the children are processed and identified, as well as the family units, they are then sent to places like Casa Padre, which is like, that was an old Walmart in Brownsville, where they have sports, where they have crafts and arts and crafts and everything. And again, it's not ideal, as those newspaper articles said, but the fact that there are just the sheer number of them wanting to come to this country and wanting to benefit from our great treatment, it is great treatment. It is not a concentration camp. The intake only takes 72 hours. That's where they just wait to be processed. The whole reason they opened up the Nogales Processing Center in the first place is because during the summer months in Arizona, the heat is so deadly, they couldn't just have this overflow outside. That's why they were in there. That's why they had the thermal blankets. And by the way, it's not tin foil. If Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had ever been camping, she would know that that's a survival blanket. She's saying she's never gonna apologize for calling them concentration camps. Well, at least she needs to acknowledge that this is a temporary intake facility. It's like when you go to jail and you're in the processing part. That's not fun at all. Once you get admitted to the general population, you get your toothbrush, you get your soap, you get your shower, you get something to read, you get a pencil, hopefully. But before then, they're just trying to figure out who you are and they're overwhelmed. So I just want everybody to please just know that regardless of the rhetoric of the Trump administration, we are dealing with a massive amount of people who want their part of the American dream. And we already accept hundreds of thousands every year, refugees, mostly from China, India, Syria, Somalia in previous years. So we are very, very, very generous. The refugee system is different from the asylum system. They are all admitted to the Health and Human Services Office of Refugee Resettlement. So I hope this clears things up. And by the way, uh, Candace Owens toured uh, one of the shelters for the Office of Refugee Resettlement and she was crying because when she was poor growing up in Connecticut, never in her upbringing did her school ever have a beauty salon, arts and crafts, sports, all this stuff. Now they could leave and go home, but they weren't asking to go into another country either. I personally believe we need to do more. We need to put more money right away to deal with this backlog. And I've been saying that forever, but please let's not call these concentration camps. Let's not pretend that our government is trying to somehow harm or exterminate the people who are trying to get here so that they can be safe and have such a better life. The life that they would have here is so markedly better. It's absolutely ridiculous. And then of course people say, well, they're fleeing conditions that were caused by the United States. Yes, that's, that's true. Caused by the United States, but also caused by certain conditions, the wealthy, their old money in these Central American countries. And they treat their underclass abominably, much worse than we treat our lowest, even though I just walked by a homeless person here in Santa Monica. And as you know, we're having that problem too. So if everybody would pitch in and try to find a solution, a bilateral solution, and we wouldn't have this complete meltdown by the media, maybe we could actually come together and unite. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez said in her, in her tweet recently, they call them freezers, meat lockers. No, they're coming out of this super hot Arizona desert. They had the chain link enclosures to separate people by age, by gender. To say they call them meat lockers, to say that they call them freezers is disingenuous. Survival blankets are not tinfoil and 
to suggest that a country that has the highest standard of living in the entire world is deliberately keeping people in concentration camps when we know we have a backlog of a million people waiting for asylum and we don't want to just release them in, into, here, into the country because we don't know who they are to suggest that we are trying to somehow mistreat them, exclude them or exterminate them is simply wrong. America loves refugees and America treats refugees well. So thanks for watching and please keep calm. And if you're talking to anybody about these intake facilities, remember the key is they are temporary. They're temporary to identify everybody and process them and get them to where they need to go while they wait their case to be heard by an immigration judge. Alrighty then, peace. Shout out from LA, love you all.